Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over Durbuster. And Durbuster is a Java based utility that is going to allow you to test or brute force files and directory on a web application server. So we've been talking about vulnerability assessments and collecting information and coming up with all these things that you need to properly perform a security assessment of your organization or to another organization, or if you are a pen tester, to collect the information that you need to do the next thing that you're trying to do. And for that, you need to collect as much information as you can. Now, many organizations or most organizations do have a web presence and which means that they have a public website and the website contains information. Now, let me just give you a quick recap of a website or a web server. I'm going to bring this over right here. Uh, remember that, or keep in mind in case this is new to you, that what a website is, is a collection of files that are going to have some type of code or code or instructions that are going to be interpreted by the web client to perform a specific function. But at its core, everything is just simply files and directories, right? So this is a screenshot of an IIS server, uh, which is Microsoft. And as you can see here, we're using as an example that we're running a website called example.com. And as you can see, that is stored in this directory, in the directory structure of the server, right? You have to remember that this is just a directory structure that is stored, in this case, on a Windows server because it's IIS. If I can type... Uh, but uh, it is the same concept for the other web servers like Apache, right? You're going to have a directory structures where files are going to be saved. And as you can see here, we have the other directories where we're storing the files for that specific site. We have about amenities, arrival time, and so on and so forth. So it is up to the web developer to create this, the, this directory structure to store, to store the files. The point is that everything in a web server is saved somewhere as files and folders. So when you are scanning, for instance, example.com, and you would like to see what is um, stored in that website, and not only the main side, the root side, but everything under that, you are going to have to perform some, some type of brute force into it. And that's when you would like to use something like Durbuster or any other project that is going to perform the same function. So let me walk you through this uh, real quick. And the, uh, the Java GUI, it's super simple to use. There is another command line out there that is called GoBuster. It's similar, but it's command line. Hey, it's up to you if you want to use command or if you want to use the GUI. i rather use the GUI. So what you need to do here, er everything is self-explanatory right here. So just make sure that you type the... Um, the target that you would like to scan, right? Let's use this as an example. This is the Nmap uh, scan me uh, server or, or website. So you know, if you can see, scan me is right here. So it is a legit site. And then uh, when it comes to the work method that you would like to use, meaning how would you like to verify it and extract uh, let me stop there for one second. You're not extracting anything. You're just collecting information. How would you like to verify and collect that information? What methods would you like to use? Are you going to use a get or are you going to use a head and a get? Now, if you use a get, it's going to be, it's going to be faster. And, you know, it's going to go straight through and it's going to show you what it shows you. But if you want the results to be uh, more complete, 
and you have more time in your hands, then you may want to use a head and a get. So it is completely up to you which option you'd like to use. And the next section that we see here is number of threads, and this is something you have to pay attention to. Uh, you can click on go faster, and as you can see, you're gonna go from 10 to processing 200 threads per second or at the same time. Honestly, I don't know if it is per second or at the same time. I would assume it's at the same time. But, or you could just drag the bar to, you know, the max 500. But if you do that, yes, you could potentially go faster with the number of threads that you would like to use. But the fact that the application supports this does not mean that your hardware does. So if you go up with 500, maybe you're gonna crash your system because it's not gonna be able to support that. So you have to balance how do you wanna do this, right? When you are doing the uh, the reconnaissance, the scanning of that target. Uh, then when it comes down here, this is where you know it gets interesting and, and the meat of, of the application comes into play. When you are brute forcing, you have two options right here. Number one, you're gonna brute force using a word list or some type of list that is gonna have a preset number of entries with directory names in there. And that's gonna speed up the process. Or you can go commando and you can create and you can select pure brute force, and then you're gonna have to select the character set of the directories that you would like to scan. As you could see here, you have this information. Uh, you, you can do numbers, lowercase numbers and letters and, and you know, and, and some special characters and, and case sensitive. And then right here, you would select the minimum and the maximum character length for the directories you're looking for. I personally have never used this in production. Uh, I, I've always used the brute force using a, a word list for this, but this is here for a reason. Per, perhaps you have a very unique need that is it's a niche that you are working on that you require to use this instead of the brute force list, a word list. But again, you can create this, you can use this criteria and create a list and then use the list to make it go faster. So this is completely up to you how you wanna do that. Now, if you select this option, you have to uh, then browse for the list that you would like to use. If you're using Kali Linux, uh, you can install the word list and then or I believe the word lists are automatically installed if you install um, Go Buster, but then you have to point to the list, right? You go to the root folder, then you go to user, you go to share, and then you go to word list. Uh, where is word list in here? Okay, it's right here. And then these are word lists that I have installed and that you know some of them came preloaded with, with Linux. But as you could see, I have a section for just their buster. So I'm gonna double click on it. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine lists that you can select. Now, as you can imagine, the effectiveness of the results that you are going to get are going to be based on the word list that you are using. The bigger the word list, the more, the, the, the better your results are going to be because you have more entries to scan. So let me come right here for one second and I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm gonna go to CD user share wordless D 
Twitter Buster. Let me do a lesson, for instance. Let me use or let me just check how many entrances we have on the small, right? So that is cat. And what is that? It is directory list lowercase directory. List lowercase 2.3, and I'm gonna do small.txt minus n. And as you could see on this specific list, I'm gonna have I don't even know, probably okay, 80 or just over 81,000 entries in this list. But as you can imagine, if I do, if you check the um the medium one obviously it's not going to be just over 81,000 it's going to be more than that as you could see we just passed that and then as you can imagine if you have a bigger list you could potentially detect more directories and files in there now something to keep in mind here and I forgot to mention this is that when you're running the scan, you're not just detecting the visible files and directories in the web server. You are identifying those that are not published or those that are hidden. That's what you're doing this, right? You want to find what's not perhaps visible so you could collect all that information for your assessment. So uh, the... You know, the more entries, um, the more entries in the list, it means that the scan is gonna be, uh, it's gonna take longer to complete because you're gonna be scanning more. And now, when we come down here, you have, uh, you know, like the options like brute force directory, brute force recursive. You know, where you want to start this, you want to start at the root, and then you want to brute force files. Of course, you want to do that. And if you have a specific uh, file extension that you are looking for, you can add it right here by just adding a comma and then typing the extension of the files you are looking for. Once you have this, you can click on start. Now, as you can see, this is going to start testing the directories at the root and it's going to go through the criteria that we set for, uh, for this. And it's going to go through the scanning process. You see it found a, an images directory. And the other thing that you are going to see as the scan continues to run and information is detected the system automatically is going to populate in a tree-like structure the directories that are found for you. So as you can see, what are the root? We have an image, and in the image, you know, it has not seen anything yet, but if you find something, it's going to populate that in there. And it's going to go through all this. You know, we found a shared directory with some JSONs, uh, files, so on and so forth. So you get the idea. Again, we are brute forcing the results based on a criteria that we established in the application. And this is one of the many tools that you're going to use in your arsenal to um, do vulnerability assessments and in your pen test career. So I'm going to stop this video right here. I hope you liked this information. If you found this useful, why don't you just click on the like button, leave a nice comment, and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that, and I will talk to you on the next video.